Hi, my name is Kelston Kano, better known as Chef Sweets. Welcome to Kitchen Chatter, a program produced by Ethnic Cuisine and What We Do in Anguilla, in collaboration with the Department of Youth and Culture. Growing up as a child, we all ate foods and treats which we can remember today. Some are still celebrated. Unfortunately, most are slipping away. We probably took up the mandate of preserving some of Anguilla's culinary traditions. Join us as we travel the island in search of culinary masters who make such foods and treats. Today, we have a very special guest, Cod Gums, who has a culinary playful take on his childhood memories. Hey guys, I'm Kurt Gums. I'm right here in the kitchen and I want to take you through my playful interpretation of a mac and cheese. Now, when I grew up, or when all of us grew up, I would say, you, all kids gravitate towards, you know, macaroni and cheese, lasagna, pizzas. What is not good about these things? But I don't believe that you can preserve the tradition of food without thinking about the elderly or thinking about the younger generations. And in order to do that, I want to myself to show you what I would enjoy eating. And that's taken it to an innovative level, but it's quite simple in a sense. I want to apply different flavor profiles, which you will remember growing up. So what I'm gonna do guys, macaroni and cheese, here we got. Just a bit of macaroni, a bit of simple pasta. It's a very, very simple dish. And you can take this to different heights, different heights. And I'm quite excited about it because when you're too young and you're eating spaghetti, you're eating lasagna, these things always sing joy, it sings yumminess, and that's what we give kids. And I wanna give it to you guys right now, a little bit behind the scenes of how I will cook my mac and cheese. So here we go. We got our lovely pieces of macaroni, and we're gonna cook these out. If you're thinking about macaroni, you can always say, okay, read the packet, how long will we cook that for? What, seven minutes, nine minutes, standard pasta? but it's all up to you and your preference. We don't want it al dente in Anguilla, I'm sure not, but I'm gonna take this for nine minutes, nine minutes exact. The trick is with this, once it's cooked, you have to work very quickly to ensure that you're allowing the starches with the natural air to stick the pasta together. But we're gonna go through that a bit longer, so let's run over to the pot and get this cooking. Don't forget to take the salt. Boom. Pasta is in cooking. We're gonna take it for nine minutes, nine minutes exactly. And all this is now gonna do is a bit of a waiting game. So while the macaroni is cooking, what do you need to make this dish? It's quite simple. I got a chopping board, I got a sheet tray, I got a nice little block of Parmesan cheese. You can use pecorino as well. And what I have here in this bag is a semi-dried tomato paste. So this is made with like garlic, some shallots, some thyme, semi-dried semi tomatoes, and you blitz it into a little paste. Quite simple. What we got here is a comfy shallot bachamel, which is just salt, sugar, shallots, comfy down, a bit of butter, thyme and garlic again, a little bit of rosemary, and then we make a bachamel, which you guys are gonna call a white sauce. How do you make that? You use equal quantities of flour and butter to make your roux, and then you add milk to it. So let's go for a basic recipe, let's say 50 grams of flour, 50 grams of butter, melt it, cook it all together for about two to three minutes and add about 300 mils of milk. Whisk that together until it's light, white and creamy to a ribbon stage and then add a little bit of salt, but don't add too much because remember we have concentrated tomatoes into your paste and we also have the comfy shallots, which is a little bit sweet and a little bit salty. And then to top it all off, the beautiful cheese. So you don't need too many salt. That's it. Nothing else I need to make this dish or my interpretation of the mac and cheese. And I'm here on the island, I'm you know planning on visiting again, and every time I come, I would love to learn a couple of things that is being somewhat forgotten, like coquinha. I would love to make coquinha. Sham, you know, I would love to make some sham. And I wanna be able to, to, to see these things, you know, the proper way of, of doing conky dumplings. These, these things are, you know, rooted into the tradition of, of, of Anguillians, and it goes much more than that. We are eating fungi in steamed fish, a simple dish that Janos does very well, mm. you know? That's some other leg to speak with and cook with, mm -hmm. and how to do a proper steamed fish in fungi like they do back in the day. Yeah, I mean, you know, I say, when you think about the traditions and you take in the older generations, all these, you know, they have a natural talent for just cooking things by the eye, by the feeling, by the touch, no recipes. And that's, that's, that's totally all right. I just want to be in that circle, up close and personal, 
and learn what, how they do it, that field, that site, and then be able to pass it on for the younger generations because we cannot evolve as a country or take our cuisine to another level unless we have the younger ones to continue to foster that and take it further. Making, you know, the classical bread for here, the Johnny Cakes, you know. I've been around a couple of people that they use and they make the flour and they mix it with a fork. No, I am a firm believer that you need to get your hands in the dough. You gotta get stuck in, feel it, mold it, see if it's if it's a bit tight, if it's a bit wet, if it's a, you know, feel that malleableness of the of the dough, the elastic, elasticity of the gluten being worked. You can't do that by having a fog. But again, there's different preferences. But this is what I hope that this series is gonna be on, you know, unveiling is going deep into the tradition or the customary practices on what they do for tradition here in Angola for preserving the culinary scene. So here we go, we're gonna take out our pasta. Now that we have our macaroni cooked, it's very, very, very important that you work with it quickly. And I know that means it's gonna be very hot, but you actually need the steam and the natural starches that comes out of the pasta to help it allow it to create a natural glue to stick. So every now and then, I'm gonna be using it. I got some of the steam water underneath. We're gonna be going and layering this up. You know, take your time. Make sure there's no indentations into your pasta. It's all about position, alignment. Take some time. But that's exactly what it took for us to get where we are now today, is history. It was all about time. And this is the way I like to cook, you know. Innovating on certain things that you have learned, the nostalgic memories of flavors that I grew up with. So every time that I layer this down, I'm squeezing it together just to make sure it's nice and steamed. So here we have the macaroni now. We have allowed it to cool for about five minutes, but as well, you can put it in the fridge and allow it to cool even longer. And now it's all about cutting the shape that you want, whether it's a square, rectangle, etc. Uh, I'm just gonna take a standard shape. I'm gonna count how much, how big I want it to be. There you go. So that's nice, stick together. Woo, don't play with your food. Well, I do, I do, I do. This is childhood memories and I'm gonna play with the food. So yeah, bring it down. Here we go, we have it nice, like a little raft. So now that you got it cut, the hot part is done. It's all about layering up your flavors now. Once you're at this stage, you got your macaroni, you got your tomato sauce, which is made from the sun-dried tomatoes, and we got our comfy shallot bachamel. All we're gonna do is finish with a bit of cheese. Again, guys, this might look different, but when you taste it, you should be, you know, transported to remembering as a kid having what, you know, lasagna, pizza, you know, these type of dishes, mac and cheese. And I'm just gonna give it a general shaving of some good old parmesan. And there you have it, guys. This is a little mac and cheese, which is childhood memories, bringing together all those familiar flavors from when we was young. But not just really looking at it, now we have to actually taste it. So let's get in. Ooh, cheesy, tomatoey goodness. It is hot. Get in there, try it, try it, try it. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, this. Mm. You guys are gonna taste it too. I'm gonna have that. Pizza we taste, isn't it? Ah. Yeah, I love, Mac and cheese. I love the balance with the tomato and the, the bechamel. Really nice. Simple, really nice. easy, but yet elevated. Wow. Ooh. Dung the hatch. It's good. I'm testing you, test this out. This is where you got things on the menu where your kids can go and definitely feel not left out. And I know sometimes I do fine dining, but we want to create a environment where we have an education or etiquette with, you know, we teach them table manners, knife and fork and spoons and where this goes and so forth, but as well, how you can eat food. And we got kids in the restaurant to be able to sit and enjoy things that they are familiar with 
But as well, there's no big separation between the adult's food or a child's food. And I'm, I'll happily have this anytime, whether it's a side dish or a main dish, because this is something that I know. So here we go, guys. This is one of the first episodes of my interpretation on a playful mac and cheese using nostalgic flavors of, you know, my childhood coming up, um, which is basically like, it tastes like a lasagna, it tastes like a pizza, it tastes like mac and cheese, but a different interpretation, which is what I like to do and how I like to eat things. And I want to thank Ethnic Cuisine's Kitchen for allowing me to be here, Lit Lounge, and of course you guys, what we do in Anguilla, because you're doing a brilliant job. Thank you so much, seriously.